Steve and I are back in Alaska with Brooks and Jack, and they've each invited one of their teenagers along for the adventure. We fly from Fairbanks to Bettles and then take a float plane out to an area of the Brooks Range called the Aragetch. The Aragetch Peaks area has been on our radar for years, and we're excited that this summer we're finally making that trip a reality. There is no shortage of epic routes or iconic objectives that we could have attempted. The area's almost Yosemite-like granite towers provide opportunities for anything from expedition-style big wall climbs to scrambling up the backs of pristine peaks, not to mention epic pack rafting opportunities in the many creeks surrounding the area. But after discussing some of these options, we decided that this trip wouldn't be about any specific route or objective, but rather, we would just get to the Aragetch area and enjoy a series of smaller objectives, kind of like an Aragetch buffet. Upon being dropped off at Circle Lake, we all feel the urge to say some stereotypical words about how remote it feels when the plane leaves. All right, we're all here in the Circle Lake area, getting ready to put packs on for the first time. I feel so isolated and lonely. <laughs> like Ever since that plane flew off, civilization's just so far away. You realize like how really like alone and isolated you really are. Right off the bat, the going is difficult in typical Brooks Range fashion. There's no trails except the occasional game trail when we're lucky. Instead, we're tumbling over tussocks and bushwhacking through brush. I've said before and I'll say again, hiking poles are a no-brainer. And once again, I don't have any. Alright. Walking across. Classic land with no poles, and I am really struggling. Whoa. We were encouraged by the glimpse of the Aragetch peaks in the distance, but our packs were heavy, the way was difficult, and progress was slow. We didn't make it quite as far as we'd have liked to have on that first day. This is where we'll make our first camp. <sighs> Jack even took a brief little dip in this neat pool by our campsite. Day two, leaving the campsite we just stayed at in roughly the same light conditions as when we arrived. 12 hours later. <laughs> 12 hours later? Wow. All right. Hey. Hey, hey, bear. Hey, hey, bear. Yeah, I came out to a nice little view here. Check that out, waterfall in the foreground. Cool peaks in the mist in the background. Sweet. We made a sort of base camp near the confluence of those creeks and then spent the rest of the day taking advantage of the good weather to hike up to the valley just south of Aquarius Valley. We didn't realize at the time how precious and rare blue skies like this would be on this trip. Clouds and mist, if not outright rain, were always only a couple hours away. We're looking at kind of the south face of Parabola Peak, and it is impressive. Yeah, we're treated with this beautiful rainbow right here in this beautiful place with beautiful Jack and Brooks. She's got some really cool bright red lichen. Like, they're almost as bright as my shoelaces. Well, we're here in the Aragetch, and it's still beautiful but it's just been rainy all day. On some little birdies. <whistles> they think I'm their mama. Well, the sun's finally out. Although it is still raining. But yeah, we're gonna take a little hike. Should be fun. I should clarify that this hike took place on day four, as day three we literally just stayed in our tents all day. A few other giants are poking through the mist. 
Look at that real pointy one back there. Wonder if you can see that. Wow. <laughs> yep, close enough. <laughs> nice. There's the gang with elephant's tooth in the background. Slightly different shot here. Yeah. Wow. This is a beautiful view right here. As we hiked on, I had the idea to set up my tripod and do a time lapse. I was really hoping that the clouds would clear, we would see a great view of Xanadu Wall. Unfortunately, the clouds just never cleared. At least down the valley, the skies were looking a little clearer. Mm -hmm. Steve and I in this little uh, bug net cooking our dinners. On day five, we picked up and moved camp down to the Ayagamahala Valley. It was about this time I started to feel weird about the whole trip. Like everything had been harder and taken longer than we'd expected, and the wet granite had kept us from climbing any of the cool peaks we would have done in the Aragech area. Pack rafting down Aragech Creek looked absurd, I don't even know how Roman Dial managed it. And with our weather forecasting data, we were doing our best to try to hike on rainy days and save the sunny days for scrambling up peaks, but the weather kind of just kept doing the opposite. And did I mention how difficult the walking was, how heavy our packs were? how bad the mosquitoes were. I mean, I'm no stranger to suffering on these kinds of adventures, but usually that suffering is on the way to accomplish something. And I'm realizing that this is day five of this trip and I've seen some cool stuff, but I haven't really accomplished anything. But as we made our way down into Ayagamahala Valley on day six, I guess I was still just pretty optimistic that we would have plenty of chances to scramble up some peaks, do some cool pack rafting. There's even supposedly a hot spring in Ayagamahali Valley. Spoil alert, we never found it. As a side note, this yellow mossy ground was the best walking we had the entire trip. Got a, got a nice little place to stash all our boating gear. It's quite a load off our backs. With the weight of our boating gear offloaded, the bushwhacking might have been almost maybe a little tiny bit easier. <sighs> Coming through! But at least the new area was looking really cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's just so like singular yeah. from this view. Look at our tents at the base of that waterfall and these beautiful, cool, craggy ridges and <whistles> it's a beauty. We arrived in camp pretty late and after setting up our tents and eating dinner, I thought it might be nice to rinse off and wash my hair. But I think Jack had the better idea. He decided to just take advantage of the good weather and explore further up the valley. He asked me if I wanted to go with him, but at this point, I guess I was still thinking that we'd just have more good weather days ahead. So I kindly declined and just took my little bath. He ended up picking his way all the way to the top of East Maiden, one of those iconic towers we could see from the other side which, as far as accomplishments for the trip, was pretty much the most anyone had done so far. East Maiden looks really cool. 
The next day it was raining and Steve asked me if I wanted to get up and do another little look around hike and I kindly declined again only to find out later that he also made it to the top of East Maiden. So yeah, I kind of regret not taking the opportunity to climb the only summit I would have done the entire trip. Well, it's another rainy day. It's Sunday. I've just been in the tent the whole time. Steve like went out and did a cool hike. I think the rest of us have all just been hunkered down. I think that was literally the only video clip I took all day. Up here in the Aragetch. Not a lot of visibility. But if it were, there would be a lot of really cool peaks to look at. At least we get a lot of cool waterfalls to look at. This was Monday, day eight, and as much as I would have loved to run up East Maiden right then, we had to get packed up and headed to our new campsite to stay on schedule. I don't think the camera will appreciate how hard that was. There is some intense mosquito edge here. All right, here comes Cal in the ferry. Just getting across the river because we've heard there's a hot spring over here somewhere. We don't know if it's true, but if it is, we're gonna find it. As I mentioned before, we never found the hot spring. If it exists, it's definitely not where the USGS map places it. It might be over where Roman Dial puts it on his beta. All right, we, we might have broken the record for just like the highest concentration of mosquitoes in one place. Like they are just That's really... It's impressive, yep. It probably doesn't mean much coming from me to say that those were the worst mosquitoes I've ever seen, but Brooks and Jack, who are both Alaska residents who have spent a lot of time in the Brooks Range, they agree that that was the worst mosquitoes they've ever seen. The next morning, day nine, we loaded up our pack rafts and got ready to float the creek. It was sure nice to not be carrying a big heavy pack, but I was personally a little afraid of what the river might turn into, but everything was honky-dory for the first little bit. Then I got hung up on some shallow rocks and while trying to free myself, I uh, did this. This video clip was taken later, but I'm just using it to show how I fixed my paddle with a stick. It wasn't great, especially since the river was getting a little bit more tricky, but I was glad that it worked as well as it did. Yeah, boy. That's me in the yellow boat, and the paddle seems to be doing okay. The creek really was getting more intense, and this next video clip is from the aftermath of a gnarly drop that Jack later said could have been a 4+. plus. Jack, Steve, and Sarah all ran it, and Sarah even managed to get it clean. The rest of us just lined our boats past that point. We quickly realized that the creek was becoming a little too much for us to handle, and we ended up having to put our packs back on and hike down the river a ways before finally getting back in on calmer waters. Once we hit the Alatna River, the water was about as calm as you could get. The last leg of our trip was to hike over to and paddle across Takahula Lake, the place where the float plane was scheduled to pick us up the next morning. The next morning came, and then so did our plane.
As I mentioned before, this was kind of a weird trip for me. On the one hand, it seems pretty ridiculous to have spent so much time and money getting to a remote area just to experience what was ultimately kind of a suffer fest, and we didn't even really accomplish any pronounced objectives. As Brooks put it, there are cheaper ways to suffer. But on the other hand, I feel incredibly lucky to have been able to intimately experience such a remote area that so few people have ever been to. I think I can safely say that this adventure was more than a mere suffer fest. But hey, even if it was a pure suffer fest, you couldn't ask for a better group of people to suffer with than this crew. Until our next adventure, guys. Thanks. So after the rainy week, it was necessary to hang a few things up to dry. This is our yard sale around Brooks' cabin of things out to dry and all the way down the line over there. 